My name is Huntener, the storyteller, and I would like to tell you a story about adventure and action and intrigue. The story of a young man who, in spite of a rough start, rises up to find his destiny and begin the path to creating a legacy that will be remembered through all of history. Our story begins with our hero's father, Amir Suwab Ibn Umar of the Hafsid Empire. One day, while looking about in the market, he sees a sad, beautiful Christian slave, his wife dead, and feeling lonely for female companionship, he decides to purchase the young woman with the intent only to show her kindness. But as the story nearly always goes, the emir, a widower, grew close to the young slave, who was more than thankful for his kind treatment compared to that of the slavers and the pirates who stole her from her land. Before long, that closeness turned in to a pregnancy, and that pregnancy turned in to a child. But the emir had many sons, and he did not wish for this child of a slave to overshadow and usurp the position and inheritance of his other sons. And thus it was that he decided that he would disinherit the boy, remove him the line, from the line of succession, but still he felt an obligation to the young boy. And so he sought a place for him. As a young man, he had spent many years in Al-Andalus, in the sheikdom of Salib. There, an old friend of his was Emir, a friend who he knew he could trust to raise his boy and to assure that he was educated and provided for according to his station. Amir Bakir took the position of guardianship very seriously, seeing to much of young Uzzah's education himself. And he was not disappointed. While the boy didn't take to his lessons perfectly, he was attentive and devoted to both his education and to his new guardian. When it came time to teach the boy strategy and combat, Bakir decided to entrust those duties to his son. Muiz and Uzzah became great friends in their time training together. Uzzah was a good student, learning both the strategies of running a war as a commander and prowess at fighting battles one-on-one. -on -one. The two became more than friends. They became like brothers and trusted each other implicitly on and off the field of battle. Eventually, Uzzah grew into a strong young man. He was the envy of his peers and loved by the entire family. There was a particularly strong bond between Nuera and Uza. It was not unnatural and not unexpected that the two young people would eventually fall in love. When Amir Bakir discovered the growing passion between the two of them, he did not object. And yet, he had concerns. Uza, although of a good family, had no prospects and no future, and his daughter was something of a favorite. He had expected her to have everything she wanted in life, to live in a palace, to marry a prince, or at very least a sheik. Loving the boy and wanting nothing more than to find a way to make the match work, Bakir took him before Sultan Muhammad ibn Abid al-Rahim, his liege and ruler of all al-Andalus. The Sultan had much to say about the matter. You see, for many years he had had a difficulty with Christians in the islands just off the east coast of the peninsula. Obstensively, they did pay some homage to Al-Andalus, but it was a loose agreement and one that the Mozarabic Christians had betrayed more than once calling for Christian aid when things had went bad instead of turning to their close neighbors in Al-Andalus. And so he put it before the emir and young Uzzah that should they find the men needed, or at least some of those men, he would provide resources so that they could take those islands and bring them directly under his control. Uzzah would be allowed to rule there as sheik if, of course, the military endeavor proved to be successful. And so Uzzah and Muziz led men provided by the emir and by the sultan himself across the sea and to the islands where those Mozarabic Catalanian Christians dwelt. 
and though the fighting was long and hard, eventually, Uzzah's leadership and Muzi's experience and cunning led to a final battle, a victory, and the two young men celebrated a future, not just as friends, but as brothers. And so Amir Bakir approved the marriage between his beloved daughter and his beloved ward, wishing them nothing but success and honor, and hoping that the boy would expand what little he began with to create a name for himself. As for the Sultan, he was simply glad to finally have the islands under his grip completely, and hoped that Sheikh Uzzah would be able to use his new position as an overseer of ports in the Mediterranean Sea, and help to weaken the Christian plots that came from France and Italy. Only time will tell what the future holds for Sheikh Uzzah and what his destiny is. All right, now that you've seen our role play story, we're going to talk a little bit about what we intend to do with this game. We're going to be out of character, not really playing much for the beginning here, just to do an introduction to go along with the story intro that you have already seen at this point. This is our character, Wali Uzzah Ibn Shuab. He is the son of Amir Shuab here of Hafsid. This island in particular played a big role during this period because the control of these islands partially by Muslim rulers made it difficult for the Byzantine Empire to leverage its navy in the region to break up all of these stronger powers. And the concept for this game is more or less that our disinherited Wild Oats son of Amir Schwab with the assistance of his guardian mentor and friend Amir Bakir has been given control over these islands with the intent of helping to stifle sea trade and interference by Christian powers in the Mediterranean and to give Al-Andalus more power over the sea, displacing the Christians who ostensibly held this, these three islands previously. And that is going to connect us deeply into the Iberian struggle but it also lets us have a character with a little bit of style. The concept here is going to be to basically work on culture and to conquer as many of the islands in the Mediterranean as we can with the hope of eventually controlling all of the sea in the region. For setup's sake, this is a highly save edited game. We didn't save edit it anyway to make our character particularly strong. We are an under 400 point custom character. This could be, that could be if the save wasn't edited used for an Iron Man game very easily. He is designed to have a military start, but in order to achieve our goals, his children are going to have to push in a slightly more prestige direction if we are going to become pirate raiders to undermine the christians we are going to need to change our culture currently we are baranas we're a berber culture we have not particularly great traditions and our territory is catalan our hope here is to eventually make a hybrid culture between the two, which will allow us to keep the ones here that we think are good, like probably refined poetry, ritualized friendship, maritime mercantilism, and then maybe African tolerance, probably African tolerance. And then to that, we're going to add practice pirates, which will allow us to continue to raid. Well, it'll allow us to do raids while we are still a clan government. So that's the goal. We want to become powerful 
pirates. Having said that, there are a few things we've done to set up the game from the story that are important. One, we have given ourselves a friendship starting here with Amir Bakir, who was our guardian. We've also given ourselves a friendship with his son, Muiz. And we have already instituted a marriage with his daughter, Nuara. Once that marriage goes through, we... That marriage is set up to go through immediately. As soon as we start playing, it's already been clicked and the save has already passed the point where I clicked it. I will include this save just in case anybody out there is interested in this start. Because the start is highly modified and if you don't want to modify the game yourself to get something similar to this or you're just interested in this very, very edited beginning, I'll make it available in the links in the description below. I edited in his father, of course. I edited in his house. So he's part of his father's house. I gave him disinherited so that the things I edited in won't give him any claims or and will keep him out of the uh, line of succession. And really that's our start. Our gameplay at the beginning is going to be more or less trying to take advantage of our situation to grow as quickly as possible, use the defense that we have from being part of Al-Andalus to get strong in the region and take other coastal territories, both from Christians and from other Muslims and try to expand our power without being overwhelmed by the goings-on in Al-Andalus and Iberia. Hopefully, we can uh, find a way to make this particular start as interesting as possible, and like I always want to do in every one of my games, we're going to push towards creating a story more than just playing the game to paint the map. And yeah, that's the intent. Let's just let's just look over here and make sure that everything else is done to the best of our ability. Our starting... They're not terrible, but they're also not good. Our starting council. We're going to have to get to know these people. At least whoever stays. And then decide what their personalities are like and uh, what we can get out of them. Our spy master absolutely hates us. Why is that? Oh. Because she's most Arabic. And so is he. That makes sense because we did just take this land. And... That means we're going to have to probably replace them. She's a zealot, so there's no possible way we're going to be able to um, force her to convert. So we're just going to have to replace her with whoever else we can. Our big problem at the beginning is absolutely going to be that a lot of these people are going to be Catalan and they're going to be Mozarabique because of our bad starting position. We're going to want to convert everyone who will. And that's not going to be a lot of people, I don't think. Because we're not particularly diplomatic. So that creates a bit of a difficult situation. We're going to have to try to... see if we can do anything to fix this situation. She is going to be a problem. Anyone else. Anyone else will be better than her. This guy hates me just as much, so maybe not anyone else. And this is going to be one of our biggest problems to overcome. We have nobody at all. Uh, 
of our religion. So let's just see what we can do here. Will my steward convert? My steward will convert. So that's a place to start. My marshal will convert. He might convert. He might ask for something instead. We may have to put him out of his job right away. So we've unpaused and started the struggle. All right. So we have now become married. She will immediately become our Wait, that was the what did, did I I don't know what I just did there. Oh, right, that's not who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm supposed to be looking at his wife. So I have I have now become married. I am now a sheik. Of course, my liege is the sultan. Let's see if he Let's see if he buys the title here and gives it to me. That's something we can hope for. Now, we want to just see what else we can do. This guy, do we have any warriors who are at all good? This guy is my chancellor and he will not convert or he might convert well it's worth a shot let's see what what he says let's have this guy who's my steward don't think I have a better steward though good that solves one of our problems does it not yes it does good now Let's see what happens with our conversion requests. Not that high a chance, but you never know. So he wants me to pay him. Yeah, I'm willing to pay him. Because I think doing so will help with our stability. What is he... He's just going to probably end up staying in the job. He also is converted. Maybe, actually, maybe we don't leave him in the job. We'll keep him as a warrior, but we will swap him with him. We will swap him with him and then we need to find somebody who can do the job of the steward Let's see do we have anyone we can marry off for that purpose it's my wife she's already married She is the one that I could not convince to change her religion, not surprisingly. Will she marry someone who can do the job for me? I mean... What is my personal feeling about... Well, I'm actually pretty religiously open-minded, right? So let's do a matrilineal marriage and bring him in through her. That'll keep her around in spite of the fact she hates me, but that's fine. We probably should have done this right away. But I wasn't exactly expecting to immediately come off of there. 
So our prowess is okay, but not great. We'll... Let's start with strategy. And then I think we're going to go down... I think we're going to go down this way. Down Gallant to get to the Household Guard, I think. Just to start, because we do want to try to fight some wars. Like, this is a good early opportunity war for us. So we'll probably do that. We are stronger because of being underneath our, our liege now. That should, once the, uh, once the last of those marriages go through, we can fix our, fix our steward problem. And then, there we go. All right. So that's all we really need to do to start. We have no air. We're probably going to try to conquer. Sardinia. Right away. If we can. Just to give us some expansion room. And then from there. We're going to spend some time on development. And developing relationships. We may get called to help our liege in wars, which we will definitely do. And that's it. That's the idea. We are a young man at the beginning of his career who, in spite of a rough beginning, has had the support that's allowed him to quickly rise up. And now he needs to prove himself in the hostile region of Iberia and the Mediterranean Sea and follow in his footsteps of helping to control the seaways for the various Muslim empires to prevent the Christians from being able to use the Mediterranean to undermine their empires and also eventually to do some raiding and more indirect undermining as we develop towards becoming the Mediterranean pirate kingdom that we see now only in our imagination thank you for watching this first episode i hope to see you in the next one the next one will be more like my usual content for the uh, tales of the high table series so it will be storytelling based and will intercut some 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 little scenes in there to reinforce our storytelling direction and to give you an idea of what I'm doing, because that's the kind of series I like to run on this channel for CK3. I hope to see you then. This has been Huntner. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please like it. If you liked it a lot, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.